Association of Structural Engineers, also known as IASTRUCT E, was conceptualized and constituted in the year 2002 by a group of senior professional structural engineers from all over the country. IASTRUCT E is registered under the Society's Registration Act 21 of 1860. IASTRUCT E is a national apex body of structural engineers in India with a mission to promote structural engineering profession and cater to the professional needs of the structural fraternity. In the short span of two decades, association has attained an eminent position in the professional field. Its membership is valued very highly in the profession. Since inception, IAS Trakti has been led by eminent structural engineers like late Sri Mahindra Raj, late Sri Sri Kumar Ghosh, Sri Subhash Chand Mehrotra, Professor Mahesh Tandran, Sri Alok Bhomik, Sri Manoj Mittal, and Professor R. Pradeep Kumar as its president. IA Structi is a permanent member of Engineering Council of India and interacts with the government on professional and policy matters related to civil and structural engineers. To expand its reach, IA Structi has collaboration with various international professional like-minded associations and institutions. IA Structi's prime objective is supporting and protecting the profession of structural engineering by upholding professional standards and acting as a mouthpiece for structural engineers in India. IA Structi endeavor to ensure that its members develop the necessary skill in structural engineering and work to the highest standards by maintaining a commitment to professional ethics and standards. IA Struct is actively engaged in organizing several continuing professional development CPD courses for structural engineers to help them update their knowledge and advance their career paths. It also conducts refresher courses for young and practicing engineers and student-oriented programs, seminars, workshops, conferences, technical lectures and discussions related to the latest technological advancements and case studies are also organized regularly for members to enable them to continuously update their knowledge and skill set by interacting with the best minds from the industry. IAS Structi's activities are widely appreciated and known for quality technical contents. IA Structi is also actively engaged in publishing its quarterly journal Structural Engineering Digest SED, code commentaries, professional guidelines and a monthly newsletter. IA Structi's publications are becoming popular with time. IA Structi has representation in various technical committees of BIS and IRC as well. Its members are actively contributing to National Code of Formulations in the year 2020, IA Structi started national awards competition to stimulate interest in the structural engineering field and to promote innovative thinking and creativity. The awards are presented to the winners in recognition of their outstanding contribution to structural engineering in the categories which include Outstanding Structure, Outstanding Structural Engineer, Outstanding Woman Structural Engineer, Promising Young Structural Engineer, and Best Master's Thesis in Structural Engineering. IA Struct E is currently operating from four regional centers namely Eastern, Western, Northern and Southern having its headquarters in Delhi to inculcate the professional culture and provide handholding to the budding engineers. IA Struct E has its student chapters in several leading engineering institutions as well. Membership of IA Struct E is open to all civil and structural engineers engaged in structural engineering profession. Members are elected based on their qualifications and experience in different grades as per eligibility requirements prescribed in the bylaws. Each application is carefully scrutinized before electing the members. More information about IA Struct E is available on its website www.iastructe.co.in.
Uh, yes, Vikas? Yes, sir. Please start. Uh, my voice is audible? Yes, sir. Uh, friends, uh, welcome to the webinar. Today would be the first monthly lecture of this new year 2024 on digital platform. So happy new year to everybody. Uh, the just uh, those uh, members who are not registered with us as members of Indian Association of Sector Engineers, uh, please become member. The form is available in the website of IES Shakti. Uh, just for uh, the uh, request from the persons who are not associated with us as members. So today's topic of the webinar is health rating system for the infrastructures. And we have a very experienced uh, person today, Professor Chandan Ghosh, uh, who will be sharing his knowledge and experience on this important subject. Yeah. Uh, Professor Chandan Ghosh graduated in civil engineering from Bengal Engineering College in 1985 and thereafter did his master's from Jadavpur University and further pursued his PhD in research yeah. uh, and completed that from IIT Kanpur yeah. in 1992. After that, he joined in the teaching and research profession as professor in uh, IIT BHU. And after working there for six to seven years, he got a fellowship and went to yeah. further studies in a Varki University, Hitachi, Japan, where he did another doctorate degree and obtained doctorate engineering in 2004 from Ibarki University, Itachi, Japan. Thereafter, he served National Institute of Disaster Management and worked there from July 2006 to December 2023. Currently, he has recently joined and working as CEO of Nishakam Technologies, an IIT Kanpur startup under Ludia, uh, France. Professor Ghosh has long experience over 33 years, and he recognizes in earthquake, geotechnology, the rapid visual screening, retrofitting evaluation, Reinforce earth, seismic micronization, ground improvement techniques, geosynthetics, and bioengineering layers. Now, regarding the brief of topic, as we all know that our infrastructure has been into phenomenal growth for over a decade, and it is high time to look into the importance of grading their performance. Having a network of sensors, yeah. monitoring stress strain deformation on real-time basis, structural engineers could pinpoint even the slightest anomalies, offering proactive maintenance and ensuring potential issues that do not escalate into the unforeseen failure. Structural health monitoring helps to safeguard lives and properties and identify potential risks. More so, structural health monitoring is our protective shield, especially for aging structures, historical monuments, and disaster-prone areas. 
वाइल्ड मदर नेचर और मे बी अनप्रिडिक्टेबल स्ट्रक्चरल मॉनिटरिंग प्रोवाइड्स ए स्ट्रेटेजिक एडवांटेज एंड इट फैसिलिटेट्स एफिशिएंट मेंटेनेंस प्लानिंग प्रिवेंटिंग कास्टली इमरजेंसीज और रिप्लेसमेंट्स इन टुडेज प्रेजेंटेशन प्रोफेसर घोष विल हाईलाइट द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ अनएंटिसिपेटेड डिजास्टर इंपैक्ट ऑन द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर along with american society of civil engineering report on the health creating carried since 1980s we have this spotlight on the same for our country's context now i request professor ghosh to share his knowledge and experience on this important subject professor ghosh please come in Uh, namaste uh, thank you and uh, this is i am really uh, elated to be elected here by the structural engineering group in the country who have excelled themselves in propagating the structural engineering profession to code through development through association even some award and uh, i think uh, this is a professional body in the country that uh, which has taken the lead and i feel myself humbled to be called for uh, on a on a area uh, that where it is not only structural engineering but it is all together infrastructure part is involved from the disaster management and mitigation perspective i would like to highlight through my presentation first of all all the participants over here and all the stalwarts in the structural engineering profession i salute to you for taking up this initiative uh for propagating uh, that on it on a, on a subject area that chosen it is on the health rating for the infrastructure so uh, let me share my screen it has come uh Yes, sir. Screen is visible, yeah. but yeah. the PPT is not. Yeah, yeah. Is there now? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. So, uh, uh, thank you, uh, the one sir, uh, for giving a nice introduction. and you have been an inspiration for all of us so uh, whatever i am going to present is nothing new it is rather uh, using several types of spices uh, that we know as a civil engineer and infrastructure engineer or environmental engineer or even hydraulics or even earthquake and various discipline that involved uh, in the making of infrastructure so it is uh, it is a perspective that i think i should share and all of you i think uh, would uh, take it in a manner uh, that i may go into from the disaster mitigation early warning nature based solution perspective that how an engineer uh, have to deal with the 21st century uh, well you know infrastructure as well as sustainable development go side by side so it is uh, that i would uh, take you to some of the things that uh, even though we have the earthquake code since 1962 and with several revision and recent revision is also going on we are 
able to see that even an earthquake less than six magnitude uh, making our buildings just as it is being shown here. It is just in 2021, 28, 28th April, Assam, Sanitpur earthquake, where earthquake traveled more than 60, kilo, 60 70 kilometer across the Brahmaputra River. And then in the Guwahati city, it has made the buildings like this. Definitely, if we look at uh, this kind of cross, just it is looking at X, or the kind of cracks that we are able to see over here. Uh, maybe uh, like these cracks, these are, we know that these are clusters, but the kind of cracks that it has made in this manner, uh, I think it will take maybe several decades to define uh, the characteristics of the crack that which is there, because ultimately, we go for modeling, we go for structural analysis, but the kind of in, uh, the kind of buildings over here and the way that it has broken, even though it is showing uh, some kind of shear crack like things, but it is very difficult to modelize or live simulation uh, of the failure of such structure. This is what we have to comprehend right now. Let me take into this kind of things also. The buildings has failed due to earthquake, and we have been making soft story building, taking an oath in the name of code, and the code has given very, 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 very general manner, the stiffness differences between the floor. Uh, some specification is there, but it depends on the individual engineer and so-called even the real estate, uh, say, real estate you know agencies i would say rather to make such kind of building uh, that which are having soft story despite uh, we know that whatever code said and no design is enough to take care of the failure that we can see not only that buildings have failed but also that even uh, uh, more costlier car also has gone out and, and it is under that. We know that such kind of failures happen. I'll show one of the live uh, simulation and real life experiments, experiments on a six story frame building later. And I would like to see that uh, show uh, the liquefaction that uh, which we have uh, given uh, its uh, impact, especially after 1964 Niigata earthquake but the kind of problems that uh, we are facing these days to the level of structural engineer, uh, we always see that what is the bearing capacity. And geotechnical discipline, they have been raising a lot of things uh, that it is not simply a bearing capacity. It has, it has to mean a lot. It is not to record simply uh, that uh, borehole has been done, soil testing has been done or not. It is not, not just like uh, making a tick mark on soil testing has been done or not. And taking a bearing capacity, uh, maybe eight ton or 10 ton, uh, by, the structural, uh, as, by the structural engineer to design a building. But there are a lot of things to peep into the soil behavior inside, which often, in most of the cases, we just keep on just with taking a sufficient factor of safety, or rather I would say it is a factor of ignorance, then we make the building design. And sometimes they are over-designed, they are under-designed, and they are found not, inappropriate, uh, not appropriate. So that aspect we have to look into. On the other hand, from the disaster response perspective, where an infrastructure like road infrastructure is there, how response has to be done. In fact, in our design, we don't take this part because this is not our area. But being from the civil engineering discipline, we have to look at that how to facilitate a lifeline of the road by creating some kind of non-structural area, like here it is a tube or geotube filled up with water, which is plenty over here, so that the communication from that side to this side remain 
alive. This is one aspect that we have to take care while rating an infrastructure, whether it is a road, it is a bridge, it is a tunnel, or it is a building, or even it is a common residential area or even industrial area. While well, we remember uh, 7th February 2021, uh, the uh, that debris like that which has happened, and without any uh, without any warning that it has traveled in the Chamoli district, and uh, and it has caused such kind of damage where more than 200 people were buried or uh, not alive, and the kind of rescue operation that went on, it remained you know, uh, with a lot of, lot of difficulties and, uh, and thousand plus crore infrastructure which were under construction and which has been subjected to such kind of debris flow related damage. I think it has not yet brought the attention of the structural engineering or civil and engineering discipline yet, but we are more, concerned about at least to give an early warning so that at least life can be saved. So our stake towards life saving is more important. Whereas infrastructure damage that caused by such debris and which is, uh, is a really, really um, important, which we have to look into. So the context is reasoning out the failure. Some of the photographs that I have shown were failure mechanism, lessons that we have learned, or even at least taking a walking survey, rapid visual survey, stage one, two, three. There are lots of publications are there since 1988 onward by FEMA. And then retrofitting, what kind of retrofitting to be done? So I'll show some glimpse of that. And what are the nature-based solutions like in case of landslides, erosion, flood, or even cleaning water? I'll show some example. And what are the air pollutions that are happening in, in Delhi or in many of the cities? And what are the other allied issues, especially how they can be explained by CFD, means computational fluid dynamic, uh, dynamics uh, modeling? I'll show some glimpse of that. An infrastructure report card, especially based on a report that published by uh, American Society of Civil Engineers 2021. In fact, they have been publishing this report every three or four years uh, since 1988. So I'll go into that detail and how they have influenced the government, uh, USA government, to make a budget, $1.2 trillion budget, uh, that based on this report. So we have to see from our structural engineering point of view that making a report, infrastructure health damage report to the government and then allocate the budget uh, based on the suggestions that we are giving that has got a very high demand now. And what are the pre and post disaster resilient measure, measures can be taken? And then construction design portal using artificial intelligence. I'll give a glimpse of this also. Using how artificial intelligence is being used uh, to make construction disaster resilient, checking them and online digital construction, how they are being facilitated, that I have to uh, take care. And in fact, uh, the photograph that which is being shown over here, even post earthquake, uh, that what kind of shelter that they have made in Japan, on 11th March 2011. In fact, uh, we have made a lot of cyclone shelter in the coastal side, but as far as uh, making shelter uh, for the earthquake, because Japan is earthquake prone, but they have made this shelter. See that what kind of shelter design that they have made over here. What kind of shelter design that they have adopted and, and how these are to be adopted in our context also. We cannot just uh, sit uh, just because uh, that government has not made any rule, but we have to come from our professional background uh, to come forward to make the shelter also robust enough so that due to uh, 
post earthquake or even aftershock that happens, like we have seen in Turkey or even in Nepal, uh, that uh, how aftershocks are also as big as even 7.5. 7, 7 so in that case, uh, what kind of shelter to be made and what kind of resilient measures to be there into, we have not yet brought these things into our domain of you know, serving the community in terms of structural engineering. So now you see that while seeing such a details of the reinforcement based on the design, is this a realistic follow-up of the code or over-engineering to a greater extent? See that what is a column and what is a beam and what are the provisions given in the code? So is this a realistic follow-up of the code or it is a over-engineering uh, to, to a greater extent? This we have to ask ourselves. And there are many such examples are there like, uh, of course, we do not consider them engineering, engineer structure because there are so many floating wall is there, floating wall you can see. And see from here to here, and then go here, and then go here. So something like these things, there are certain thumb rules are given, two feet, three feet can be extended. But when it comes into the earthquake impacted building, then such kind of thumb rule doesn't work until and unless we do the structure analysis. But in all these cases here, yeah, structural analysis or design or taking permission or checking the plan and accordingly that uh, proper design of uh, structural drawing that has not yet taken into the system of, uh, of municipality or any of the building construction. So uh, in this case, uh, Recreating now, what what are going to be happen? These are in zone four in our country in Shimla. So recreating the same in a three D CFD, which I have mentioned in the beginning. I'll show some more detail about that. Is uh, I think you may agree that these are all how to recreate the effect of one building. Say this one, if it is failed, what will cause the secondary impact on this building? Uh, there is no such software available to recreate the impact of one building like this one. This is having soft story. When this is broken over here, this will get impacted over here. And they, and they are on a very steep hills. So what kind of impact that it is going to cause? And it is very difficult engineering. And it is, these are all to that extent, you may agree that this is beyond our own, you know, professional domain to look into the impact of one such building broken or even without earthquake, even due to maybe heavy rainfall or even due to the deteriorated in, uh, structure, even if it is falling down on its own, what kind of impact that it is going to cause over this, none of the software that available or even any kind of you know simulation that we have not yet made in our laboratory, or even it is not possible to uh, recreate such things. So mm, now uh, just having said that this cannot be recreated, this impact, and then seeing that here I have shown the screenshot of an experiment carried out that when such kind of construction we are doing, with soft story because we have to accommodate car. And then making a six story frame building like this, six story frame building like this, and then test it that how it is failing. Then you can see that just, uh, let me check uh, whether that video is working or not. Yeah.
Yeah, it is coming. So can you see that a uh, six story frame building is being tested and see that where and how it is failing. So it is very much clear that, that what is the impact of such you know, uh, construction into our uh, system. So when uh, we are carrying on constructing these things in a plenty in across the uh, country in the earthquake prone area, and when experiment showing that, and there are, there, there are so many failed buildings are there, but we still give on, uh, carry on doing such kind of buildings. And now these days, uh, retrofitters group has come up uh, to retrofit such building just by increasing the uh, make some kind of uh, just increasing the column dimension up to this only because it is not possible to go for retrofitting each and every floor which uh, every floor which is the main uh, that uh, problem that we are uh, increasing. Uh, more and more uh, scope for going wrong by by adopting certain correction technique that some of us we think that yes by showing this column little fattier like this uh, would make the entire building 10 story 20 story these day 25 story buildings are also done on this and uh, we just show that uh, by making it thicker, we make it believe it that uh, these are retrofitted. Actually, it is not. So now the question is, uh, uh, we are a structural engineering point of view. Yes, we are very much correct about, uh, about bending moment shear force as per code and design the each and every structural member. And then, uh, then keep it that yes, uh, uh, with earthquake or even normal load, wind load, whatever load combinations that we take it, it is not going to fail. But there is no such performance oriented record or documentation available with us. And there has not been any such performance oriented, performance means it is not only structure, it is also with uh, many other things, like if it is having uh, some kind of consequence assessment or toxic gas release or explosion or fire, even if fire is there, there are certain standards are there, certain experiments, specific uh, experiments are being done, but from the total infrastructure behavior and performance point of view, uh, and taking into the case of the Sendai framework disaster risk reduction, which is in the midway now, and taking into account of like so many things that we are facing, whether it is road traffic impact or air pollution dispersion, odor impact or particles and COVID-like pathogen, COVID-like you know uh, virus pathogens that has made a lot of changes and impact into our society. So uh, we have to go uh, beyond structural engineering while we have to deal with an infrastructure, whether it, is a, whether it is a city infrastructure like this, and then we have to have that, what are the pollutants, that environmental impact, what are the pollutants and how to track them and how to mitigate them or even how to control them, what kind of advisory to be given to the government or agencies like we have grabbed here. Uh, when uh, here in Delhi, we know that during heavy, uh, even in the last few months, we are able to see uh, that what kind of decisions are taken, what kind of regulations are being put up, 
just overnight, all in a sudden, when AQI increases, then they have to go for gap three or gap four kind of declaration. But all have to have some kind of backbone in the decision making, which is uh, that backbone. Uh, in order to have that backbone, then we need certain system in place. And for that, uh, uh, CFD kind of analysis where it can it can simulate all these processes and impact and the risk that are involved that uh, that is to be looked into. Then uh, we know that uh, what kind of risk and vulnerabilities we are living in and in modern science and technology uh, is good enough or capable enough to control the impact of such hazard? Or what are the socio-political economic dimensions of you know, disaster? And what kind of polit policies and planning are required to mitigate the disasters? So such things just only to see. Now let me show quickly some example that this is, this is the road in Japan due to the great earthquake that happened in March 11, 2011, road has broken. And we all know that we do not have, a, uh, other than empirical formula for the last 70, 80 years, we do not have earthquake impact taken into account. Although we have, uh, we have taken some of the parameters, but th those are all in empirical domain while making a road. And we also do some kind of soil investigation, but soil investigation is carried out very specific area. Investigation done is not the main thing. Main thing is whether the soil is liquefiable, whether differential settlement is going to, going to occur or not. We know that in our textbook in transportation engineering or road design, these are not taken into account. When these are not taken into account, then what kind of capacity and capability that we have to have? So example is not that we are, uh, it was not there and it is not possible. It is possible, but majority of the cases, we ignore the soil and foundation, even for the road design. When we ignore such are the eventualities. So when such eventualities, in a in a thousands of kilometers of the road cannot be changed to uh, to uh, uh, an aspect that in the earthquake prone area especially then in that case how quickly we can repair a road how quickly we can bring back the normality even better than what it was before so as an example within 6 days the road was brought to normal operation. In fact, we are able to see even in the hilly area when uh, even earthquake induced landslide or uh, earthquake happens or building fell down or uh, due to landslide, then our effort is how many JCBs that we are using, how quickly or in how many few hours of time we are able to just, we are just inch ahead in uh, showing our strength and stamina by how many JCBs we are putting how quickly we are able to clear the road. But that is a very basic part of the things. But how quickly we can come back, come back to the normal operation with the better conditions of the road, which is one of the infrastructure type. That is one kind of area that we have to look at. In fact, uh, such kind of work uh, has not yet attracted attention to the road engineers, aiding government or aiding community coming forward with exceptional cases that of course uh, with the tunnel excavation event that happened recently in Uttarakhand that so many organizations came forward all together. So I think it has given us a good lesson that how to work together in order to make infrastructure functional as much as as much as efficiently as it is. And another example is uh, a dam in Himachal Pradesh on this date released water. You know, dam has to release water, but there is no warning system in place, resulting that 
some of the students who was on tour who has gone to the site on this site they were washed away and all of them died so having a dam and along with the dam before releasing water how many gates are there what are the level of water how much uh, if all the gates are open what will be the level of water that kind of marking was not there and not only that, siren system, sometimes they are there, but they are mostly ignored, resulting in a death, injury, damage, and a lot of other things. So we have to see that what are the post-event care taken, which is not cared enough. And here you can see uh, uh, the big note, the written over here, and that all concerned are informed that giving such kind of uh, notice is the minimum thing that is being done even after so many years. But putting a siren system, marking the level of water below which one should not go, that part still missing. So even after such kind of event also where students were drowned and they lost their life, and we have not taken too mu so much seriously, which doesn't require structural engineer, which requires a presence of mind, and whoever is the authority is there, they are true. Just by putting a notice in this way, they are far away from the reality check of the infrastructure that it should be here after whether it is a releasing of water or whether it is due to earthquake, or you see that no such protections are being uh, provided over there. <clears throat> because now these days, we are moving fast with our so many things, AI, ML, or IOTs, and there are so many data analytics uh, tools are devised and without much footage in the health assessment of infrastructure. Because we have become too much familiar in these things, and we are, even having some of the movable devices which are being assembled by local people and which each and every component are available, where we spend crores in establishing some of the uh, identified uh, area to some tower uh, to, to, to mark out specially uh, this uh, like PM 2.5, which is injurious, which is considered by all health organization and uh, medical uh, association, WHO and everyone, that this is very crucial that which, which are directly related to the health. But our local, you know, people with their own, uh, all these things, sensors, all these temperature sensors, these, these all are available in the market. So they are able to assemble this thing very cheaply, and then we can keep a track on what is going on, including even PM1 or PM10, or many other parameter can be. There are 40, 50 such parameters, and volatile components or uh, light and other things. And these are all, you know, can be assembled there to keep in track with our infrastructure, how they are behaving. So these are, locally this can be locally resourced and many of them are being in used in many of the farmhouses but we have to come forward to use these things uh, in systematic manner in our infrastructure while they are in service there are certain events that happens which we have recognized upliftment of sewerage due to subsurface movement of soil strata caused by earthquake uh, there are many such things are there that this has come out and we have been able to simulate such behavior in the laboratory and also in the field and Japan is very far ahead in this. So this is the liquefaction that has caused uh, that the sewage or even such kind of uh, drain, underground drain system to come up due to the liquefaction. We have understood the reason behind that and but taking appropriate measures in the road that liquefaction should not happen in the earthquake area. I think there are very few examples, maybe good examples are there before they reveal in such manner in the country. We still neglect. 
poor constructions everywhere we can see uh, this is the situation this is the situation this is even without any earthquake in shimla the building tilted due to the foundation no one is responsible <coughs> then earthquakes are happening these are being identified uh, tectonic faults and other things but what in civil engineering we are interested about the intensity that it is being faced but what is happening when in seismology or geology that how the plates are moving in which directions we are uh, need not to bother about that because by taking that earthquake uh, and the intensity into our design aspect and then we have been able to make that what kind of structure to be made but there are certain limits there now, uh, just going beyond uh, the structural engineering domain is that entire earth is having decorated with such kind of sensors, more than 70,000 such sensors are there, uh, which are continuously recording. But who is doing this job? What kind of government fund it has attracted? You, may, uh, you will be surprised to know that no such government fund. It is all being done. Today is January 25th. So these are the data, this is India, these are the data in a jumbo seismic monitor is being uploaded uh, every day, every week. And you can see with the color coding as well as the size that it is being shown and that where, what kind of earthquakes are happening, what is their size. The red color is, has happened today, red color has happened today. Today means this is taken just uh, one hour before. So these are continuously recorded by some voluntary organization. I'm going to give the name of those organizations who have dedicated their professional life, scientific temperament to put this. Uh, unfortunately, none of our Indian organization or scientists are involved in making this data across the globe, bringing this information live 24 seven and giving us this vital information. And also throughout the globe uh, that whichever area that we want, we can see and we can check. I have just taken the screenshot, which is shown just uh, till one hour before. So these are the information uh, which are being taken care, as I said that, in December 2015 uh, onward, uh, these are the things being shown. And USGS of uh, United States of America, USGS, they show, and these inward cities are there. So, they, uh, and you can check here, you see, you can check that what are their credentials and profiles that who are engaged in uploading this data for the global, uh, you know, uh, for all of us and then uh, getting this kind of getting connected with such kind of information is itself is a matter of you know pride for us that we are getting it free. Then another aspect that we have to look into how to keep safe uh, within a safe uh, like this we can keep we can keep something like this in our room or in our houses wherever in our offices. So these are all you know available in the internet also. When vibration is there, there is short video is also given. I have taken the screenshot only. So uh, whenever earthquake will happen, then this will come down and with some material uh, for eating items, which are listed. In fact, there are some disaster kits are also there. So one can go inside and one can remain there for two, three days to survive. But what is important is that, which we have not yet made for our country, is that earthquake, uh, you know, Real-time tracking of seismic wave from quakes epicenter here is one, number one, epicenter. Real-time tracking of the fault rupture, tracking of the fault rupture, like real-time tracking is being done because these waves are coming out. The, this is the primary wave, this is the secondary wave. Location, with my mobile phone, with my mobile phone, we are having, uh, a location like at place three. So this information has to come. We have not yet been able to make it, although Ministry of Art Science has given some grant three, four years back to IIT Roorkee to establish a system for the state of Uttarakhand 
and they could establish this and still a replica of that is there in IIT Roorkee campus. You, you may be knowing that, but in order to take it for the entire Himalaya, now National Center for Seismology, uh, they are looking into this aspect to give the early warning. Uh, but it will still take a lot of time. But what public expect, what as a community or government can expect from the scientific body, uh, including us, is that at the place, what information it is showing that from epicenter at position one, here this one, the this red one, S wave, shear wave will take 28 seconds to reach to this spot because all our smartphones are uh, geotapped. So, and at this position uh, in it will be facing an intensity of six and the magnitude of the earthquake, which is generally in Japan, they detect it within one to three seconds of time. In one to three seconds of time, this S wave can travel at the rate of three kilometers, say, up to nine to 10 kilometers. So that is why seismic array has to be done uh, 20 to 25 kilometer in a grid point. You know, each of the seismic uh, seismometer cost a heavy. Uh, so it is, uh, of course, Japan could do that, but we are not in a position. That is why we are not in a position to give such kind of early warning, at least. So uh, in this case, we expect something like this, uh, that uh, what is the background system works there, it is in this manner. In fact, we, uh, IIT Rurki has developed these things for certain part of the Uttarakhand. Now, Uttarakhand government is giving some grant, uh, but uh, in order to get this information for few seconds, is not enough, 28 seconds, yes, I have got the early warning. We just don't want uh, the 28 seconds I have got, so let me uh, satisfy it. But what is important is that about the infrastructure. What infrastructure, what difference that it can make? A running train, it can stop or even nuclear operations, it can stop. So we have not yet gone into that aspect that catching earthquake early, as early as possible and giving this signal to an individual uh, of 28, 30 seconds is the primary step because we have to save life. Of course, in 28 seconds or 20 seconds, depending on where the, uh, he or she is there or structure is there, is not always enough, but it is also it can it is also to be extended towards stopping some of the vital machinery and system uh, so that they do not go wrong due to the earthquake shaking. Like this is one of the example uh, that on twenty third April twenty uh, third October two thousand four, uh, when they have detected this uh, train heavy speed train, then they could stop this train, apply automatic brake and then derail it to the extent with minimum damage or injury or life loss. So uh, saving a train uh, and then the life here itself, and then it can bring a lot of you know, impact onto the positive aspect of developing early warning system. So, uh, in fact, one of the recent example that, uh, of course, this was in 2004, uh, 11th March, 2011, uh, that Tohoku Shinkansen means bullet train immediately stopped by, by primary wave sensors located along the coastline. No derailment, no fatalities, no injuries. And this is the, exactly that how the system in their country stopped. And then, 27 bullet train were in service between Tokyo and Shinomori. Two Shinkansen were running at maximum speed of 270 km per hour near Sendai. Uh, then P wave detected, P wave detected, electricity immediately cut off 9 to 12 seconds before the first shear wave, emergency brake. The color coding is there. And then maximum shear wave reached 70 seconds after the first detection. Shinkansen 
was already slowed down below 100 km per hour. And so there is no such problem that has happened. Emergency brake that they have applied here. So uh, now the development of an earthquake early warning system still requires further testing, increased density coverage in seismic observation stations, regional coordination, and further scientific understanding. There is a strong need to enhance the technical and operational capacities required for this system to further understand the implication for policy. So anyway, uh, if we look at that, I often show, and you may see that, to what extent that we have to work into this area. Uh, it, it, it depends on, you know, scientific temperament and our funding, as well as our willpower to look into uh, this established science uh, that already perfected some of the countries. And we are still in the experimental phase. And detecting seismicity, of course, this is the earliest sign. I would say that uh, the basic understanding is like this, but we have been able to project about uh, giving some kind of predictions or early things, but we are not able to uh, detect these things. And how uh, this animal behaves, we are yet to see how these things moves. There are a lot of scenarios are there, but we are not able to, there are more than 35 precursors are there, but not a single one has been able to uh, give us a corrective or a more definitive answer. So prediction related research is more or less, you know, it is still in experimental phase. It is yet to establish the connection. But definitely we have brought a change from whatever uh, that in 132 AD, the earliest, uh, you know, scenario analog system and how that system worked at that time before Archimedes even, uh, then bringing all these observations into taking a, a cognizance of the technology that evolved in this maybe 1895 onward seismometer came up from analog to digital 3D and all these things. And then, uh, then bringing these things into current state of knowledge that I have shown Jumbo Seismic Monitor where each and every day within few seconds, earthquake events are being uploaded. So all these things which I have been describing in the last uh, 10, 15 minutes, uh, this is some area of our civil engineering, seismology, geology, geomorphology, hydrology, even some area that applied science in the liquefaction. You know, these are all allied area that we have to look at. And then bringing that within two to three seconds, how earthquake are detected and how early warning are being given, spread through the mobile network, through satellite, and then how finally they stop or uh, cut off the electricity to maintain uh, further damage uh, uh, from happening. Then, of course, uh, because it is infrastructure, see, yeah, it may be just I have given few slides from the earthquake point of view only, but when it is a flood, which causes maximum damage, although life loss is uh, minimal, so then what kind of up-to-date preparedness that we can ensure by increasing the flow ability or flow amount through a river stream uh, with, a, with a flash flood or a flood area by raising this with the community help, the material, these materials are available. So raising this by maybe half meter is good enough to channelize the water so that the water, if they are not channelized or they are not stopped here in this manner, which is very simple, we all understand. Otherwise, the infrastructure or whatever is there uh, would have got a lot of damage. So this is one part. Another part is by making this wall, this just a boundary wall maybe, uh, a boundary wall good enough to retain the water by painting it or by making some waterproof 
waterproofing paint is the most economic way of taking risk, but taking risk with a definitive result for, you know, achieving a uh, result for, you know, mitigating the flood. So that functionality of such kind of buildings are not, you know, disturbed. So this is again another way uh, to look into non-structural uh, say mitigation measure. There are several examples are there. Just I'm showing some popular one. Even these are the polyurethane uh, material made out of petroleum byproducts. By just placing them in few minutes of time, we can stop water going from this side to this that side. So therefore, stopping or controlling the damage could have been caused by this water if it is going downwards and or even stopping the water in the basement area or by the community or the householders themselves, they can help putting this kind of wall barrier, making flood wall, this we can say flood wall barrier up to say one meter, two meter, even I'll show up to three meter, we can hold this water not attacking our infrastructure like the airport or even underground many facilities like metro and many things. Or even making such kind of infrastructure. Of course, here it doesn't require any structural calculation to that extent. Uh, but having such kind of design, the all materials are available. We can take care of our precious infrastructure by putting such kind of flood barrier wall uh, uh, from the damage. So uh, in that case, uh, I would say that uh, now even up to even this day, now let me take it to another area, thunderstorm, early warning plus rainfall. So uh, we have not yet reached to this stage by showing that whether it is going to rain in my area. So what is the intensity of the rainfall? Where it is color indicated maps are now available in uh, to some extent uh, in the um, say our India Meteorological Department website, but we have not yet got such kind of information for the public uh, to show that how much rainfall is there in terms of this way millimeter rainfall in my locality, putting such map into the Google map or local map or even our own city map. On the other hand, how much rainfall is happening, more than that is required that for any common citizen living in a city area or in a particular area, that if it is raining maybe five centimeter or 10 centimeter rainfall, what will be the inundation depth? It is so easy to calculate it, but we have not yet brought it to such an extent, even though uh, Geoinformatics is one of the branches from civil engineering only. Geoinformatics uh, have reshaped, revolutionized our way of looking at the maps. Uh, digital elevation modeling are being done. But one of the prime application is to check, especially in infrastructure damages due to the flood, due to the rainwater, due to the excessive rainfall, or due to the uh, due to such kind of things that we can map out and show them, share them, that at what time, what period, how long, that if dam break happens or even anything happening in the Himalaya, uh, then water will be coming out. A lot of cloud bursts are happening. Even so many events are happening. Like in the beginning, I have shown about the water uh, that damaged that, uh, that Tapuban area. Uh, in 2021, 7th February, debris flow, that 200 plus people got buried into that. So uh, there is a huge application uh, to take the rainfall using a movable, you know, rain gauge and weather stations uh, and tracking those things by locally resourced uh, those, uh, you know, IoT devices and then connecting them put them in the GIS, then we can bring, let the people know that what is the amount of water that it is going to inundate 
in the locality. So having known or simulating these things, we could have got that whether in the underground or underpass area that before rainfall occurs, uh, that whether pump that which is there, it is under operable conditions or not. So it, it can help our city governance uh, to take appropriate measures. So with what I mean to say that our structural engineering domain is very few, but to, to, to save our infrastructure by non-structural damages, which I'm showing few of the examples, then we have to seek help and then make things system run efficiently. So uh, even there are some maps are available from one point to another point. If we go there, when it is going to rain, how, how long time it is going to rain, whether inundation will be there or not. So we have not yet updated our city map, uh, even in the mobile, uh, like in Google, it is available in this manner to make uh, information, really coercive information, more definitive information, really full force. You see, heavy rain, 23 minutes from home. So starts at 10.04 a.m. It will last for 33 minutes. So such kind of, you know, bundle of information that which can help while we are able to share our live location through Google Map while going from one place to another place. It has become part and parcel of our life. Over and above that, uh, in the area of, you know, flood inundation or rainfall or intensity, and uh, we have to just only put them using our geoinformatics into such a, in this manner. So uh, not only that, we have got like interlinking warning, interlinking warning, and then interlinking of the warning system and then what kind of action to be taken. We have not yet chalked out any such coordination when an emergency like turning seconds of warning into action, whether train will stop or not, whether someone will go to the expressway or not, whether fire engine, fire services uh, doors can automatically open to prevent them from being struck shut, or whether cell phones text uh, alert can be sent to phones. So all these things, how computer uh, data stored on hard drives can quickly be sent to the cloud. So see, elevator should work or not, in what way they can be regulated. All these things could have been made into operational mode, which we are yet to take care, except uh, in some of the cases, uh, industry, or uh, yes, we have made these things, but how to connect them uh, with the local community as well as, uh, you know, disaster manager that is not yet taken any shape. Sudden failure has happened in an engineered structure. So this is unanticipated, but when it has happened, then we have to take the responsibility to clean it, to clear it and prevent it, and then take these things in this manner. So in the days to come, uh, you know, uh, the kind of events that are happening uh, on an engineered structure. So it becomes a responsibility to engineering community that how these things has, has, has happened. Was not there any scope to consideration of such kind of failure or such kind of debris flow while this uh, road infrastructures was under construction. So we have to take these things, which has to be taken beyond whether uh, beyond, uh, you know, that in these days, environmental impact assessment is being done, DPR being made, and there are so many uh, things are looked into. But when we make such infrastructures over here in a hilly area, then we have to anticipate that, uh, that such kind of debris flow is uncalled for. If it has happened, then we have to be responsible enough uh, not to happen this, or if it has happened, then we have to develop the technique and way out to clean the debris 
as efficiently as possible. And there are many such, uh, you know, before such things has happened, they give certainly some warning. So in that case, what kind of sensor or IoT devices, wireless devices, LoRaWiS devices, some of them are <coughs> like this. So uh, there are multifunction devices, five, six devices can be uh, added over here, whether it is pressure gauge, whether it is moisture, whether the temperature, whether the tilt meter, so many of them can be made into multifunction devices. Then manhole sensor um, uh, also are there. So there are many uh, sensors which can be combined. So there are, these are all in the market available and many of the shopping center, many of the hospitals, you see that service button, industrial panic button, or even smart COVID-19 carbon dioxide sensors. Uh, these are all wireless, and these are heavy, robust, IP67 rated, and even uh, they are all uh, you know operated by battery, which can function uh, even minimum 10 years to 20 years. So no need of wear or anything. It is all uh, connected through LoRa. Uh, long range, uh, you know, radio waves. Uh, for India, it is defined 853 megahertz or something dedicated for India. US is different, uh, Europe is different. These are all free radio wave. So through that, these are connected through and also one gateway can post more than 10,000 sensors and they are all having a good market in the society, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in many places, many industries. So we have to look at uh, you know, exploring the possibility of using such kind of sensor devices. Then let me come to uh, this infrastructure rating. America's infrastructure scores rate card is C minus. Uh, this is based on the 2025 uh, report. And so uh, they have made, as I mentioned, for next five years in 2021, November, uh, government has uh, earmarked 1.2 trillion budget for the, all the 50 states. So C minus, you know, their level of grading, it is poor. So how they have done it? So that I go into a report, how they have done it. And uh, we have not yet, uh, made any such records of that why this has broken that we know after it has broken and we have not yet made any such rating system how they perform better in the northeast area so we have not yet rated this thing simply a quality uh, based some quantity based uh, rating is also good enough uh, when uh, we uh, we try to uh, check the health of the infrastructure. But there is uh, no such standard uh, uh, method to check, although uh, we know that they perform better, but there is no such experimental validations. Only several historical earthquakes that has taken place. Uh, these are the lighter, but very stronger uh, joints over here, thin wall, so that is why they are able to survive. Whereas this kind of building, uh, even uh, this is uh, taken from uh, Kashmir area, uh, that it is a new construction, no occupation. Uh, it was not yet occupied, but earthquake happened in 2005 uh, that has made such kind of damage. In fact, this is a front part, bottom part, all walls have been taken off because they have not provided any structural member like beam and column over here. So, there is no such uh, records of how Dhachi Diwari building perform better, but quality wise is okay, but quantity wise performance of these things, some small experiments have been done, not prototype in this manner, that how they performed well for more than 100, 200, 300 years. So we have to develop standard rating system for this. So just in between, after that, uh, what I would like to uh, bring that in America while making this infrastructure rating, they have made into uh, 19 such uh, category of infrastructure, railway, even park, 
then uh, tunnels, roads, then buildings. So there are several categories they have made. In that cat category wise, they have given. And then uh, in the report also, they have mentioned, and this is freely available, this report. Uh, so operation and maintenance, resilience, these they have defined. So the amount of money that earmarked for this infrastructure in America, it is all based on this report. And so uh, one can see. And also that see 2021 infrastructure report card, infrastructure report card.org, it is freely downloadable. And how they make the report, you see, by 2039, America's overdue infrastructure bill will cost the average American household so much per year, or it is like $63 a week. So something like such kind of professional report made, customized for the government to take a consideration without any hesitation, without any bias and pass a bill and earmark the budget for that and go ahead, giving a go ahead for that is a rare example of professional practices in our civil engineering that we must be uh, thankful uh, for such kind of things and also should be inspired enough to take up such kind of measures in our country's context. So uh, I would say that uh, now, Infrastructure report and what are the category of the infrastructure I have mentioned, even levees or inland waterways, and then aviation, bridges, broadband is also part of that, then energy, and then hazardous waste, and then railway, all these are the, even public parks also they have rated well. So what are the individual grading that they have given? You see that uh, the, Green with arrow mark above indicates that it has improved. Aviation has become now a little bit improved from D to D plus, maybe uh, D plus. This uh, and then ports is also has improved. So you see, none of them has got any grade near to B. And here it is given A, B, C, D, F. So these are the kind of grading that uh, the professional civil engineers under the banner of AC uh, have been able to make it. So here I have not got into the complete analysis of that, but for Structural Engineering Association, uh, it is, I hope that uh, we all together can take up this exercise, bringing out an uh, infrastructure report card for our country's context. And I think, uh, let me, uh, I have a few more slides. How much time, the hands up? Anyone? Because this is something very interesting area that I would like to highlight. Air pollution. In uh, you see, there are there are very, there are series of reports are being published, especially from November, December, and uh, in in the in NCR area, and there are there are many decorative uh, remarks are there, but fundamentals behind that are still missing from the reality checkup. So uh, you see that how nicely that our newspaper Times of India, uh, they publish that what is the contribution uh, from vehicles and what are the industries from this and what are the biomass related things, contributions are there. So sources of PM 2.5 in winter. So there are categorically all these reports using data analytics, they are coming up and, but where is the solution? Where is a background, backbone analysis? Who is doing that? And how they are making this figure really realistic enough for the government to decide on something, whether vehicles should be stopped or not, whether diesel vehicle, vehicles are going to be stopped or not. In fact, uh, to be very uh, uh, to be very honest, uh, that categorically there has not been any backbone 
or DNA fingerprinting about the individual contributions which are being shown over here. This is one of the popular slides taken, but there is no such significant proof with the analysis that which can be presented over here. These are all guesstimate or estimate or something like that, because for that we need a modeling. And what kind of modeling is to be done? That is what I would like to say. Uh, so, like you see, modeling has to be done in this manner. This can be done not by any structural analysis only. Uh, it has to take into account of the fluid, means solid, air, and then, you know, temperature or air flow, humidity, time, so many aspects to be looked into. Then all it can be done. So, and with the color coding, we are able to analyze these things. So, in fact, uh, even what kind of order modeling, like we have got three, four, uh, three, four uh, dump sites are there in Delhi itself. So, uh, what are the kind of toxic material uh, that or toxic, uh, you know, things are being emitted from there? Leachates are there. And what is the smell, odor that they are uh, polluting the surrounding area? Uh, so those analysis has not yet come under the purview of structural engineer. So in that case, odor exposure modeling by CFD 3D based dispersion model, odor complaints analysis, and then odor emission retrieval by inverse modeling. Performance analysis of odor reduction measures by dispersion model, real-time odor impact monitoring, predictive simulation of odor impact, optimization of the odor sensor layout, like so many things which comes under the purview of you know, uh, computational fluid dynamics. And in that case, uh, only uh, say structural analysis program uh, that which we are perfected enough in uh, civil engineering. Uh, so we have to bring these aspects also, uh, also into that, into our purview. So, and in fact, in this area also that, uh, like uh, this is a cricket match is to be held, then uh, how many people will be coming, where they are, what is the condition of that. So far, uh, through BCCI, uh, if any cricket match or I-20, uh, uh, IPL, match is to be held in a year in a city like Delhi, then what will be the traffic situation? What time of the day that that can be arranged where pollution impact will be minimal? What are the parking routes to be made? What are the vehicle routes to be made? How many people can be allowed? And what, uh, so all this decision is, uh, can be analyzed and can be taken into account into such kind of CFD. And then only we shall be able to justify our stand in the area of infrastructure uh, that not, it is it doesn't simply consist of how many uh, how many you know structural members are there and how big small or how robust like stadium that we have made. But we have to see that what is the temperature effect, what is the cooling temperature effect, uh, what is the, what will be the effect of the people, like if one lakh people are assembled over here, and the kind of uh, what will be their health hazard. So we have to extend our analysis and purview of uh, infrastructure health into those aspects. And especially COVID has shown us many such uh, things that uh, which we all remember, but while such kind of analysis are to be taken into account, model simulation, and, and then, uh, then we can take some decision. Then only, you know, uh, health checkup uh, aspects of the infrastructure uh, can be taken uh, more seriously, and it will give us definitely uh, some of the uh, discrete you know, decision making becomes more easier, comprehensive, rational, and substantially, you know, valuable. And so, in that case, uh, then, in that case, the kind of decisions that taken 
even some of the cases and PIL, PIL being uh, submitted to the uh, Honorable High Court or Supreme Court, then basis of decision making uh, is to be done, which you can say fingerprinting or DNA testing uh, has to be uh, carried out through such kind of analysis through CFT. Then only we can bring uh, really uh, certain impact uh, of our relevance. Our means I see that civil engineering, civil engineering and structure uh, all our relevance uh, to the society in decision making in some of the gray area where just only indicative or uh, projections based on certain previous data uh, is not to be taken only uh, uh, extrapolation for the current one. So then in that case, appropriate mitigation measures uh, have to be taken into account. So there are many such uh, uh, things, uh, devices can be put cheaply and they are very cheap, convenient and many such instruments are available. They can be assembled, they can be placed and you see here uh, almost 15 such data, volatile organic compound, uh, whatever is here. And this can be carried in a car or in a cycle or motorbike or maybe walking. So uh, instead of taking the data from few of the stationary uh, tower, which are established in our Delhi or Delhi NCR area and interpolating them and then projecting them every day into the newspaper uh, can be verified, checked, authenticated, by taking more distributed representative data through such sens sensors, which you can see PM 2.5, one and all these things. So here 15 or 20 is all this relevant data can be collected at various places and through uh, inverse or reverse modeling, uh, actual distribution of the uh, AQI can be uh, taken in can be taken and can be uh, given to the government to decide uh, and based on, and that can become a basis of you know rational decision making and even you see in such cases also that where roads are there pollution is there so and here not much vehicles are there so color coding itself they can define that where is the severity of air quality so uh, now there are many slides in the hills. We generally neglect these things when they give certain kind of, you know, this happens, just we neglect this, just we keep it like that. If this is the attitude towards an infrastructure in the beginning phase of greater damage, uh, leading to uh, greater damage, then we are not helping really uh, in a right manner. And then you see that uh, the conditions of the houses that they have made, allowance policy and these things. And uh, you see, this is only just, uh, uh, these are the scenario by uh, not allowing water to drop into that. Uh, so these are all superficial measures without any presence of expertise into that area to the people. So we have to reach to that spot. And due to earthquake or many other cases, even without any earthquake also, blast happens. So how to model that? How to simulate that? So there are, again, CFD comes there to simulate these things, impact and pressure uh, and initiation, and then simulation can give us more sensitive, <clears throat> uh, you know, decision-making about the safety, preparedness, mitigation, and all these things. So uh, now let me, uh, this kind of infrastructure that failure has happened, or such kind of infrastructure, such kind of failure uh, gives that there is a lot of, lot of things that we have to look into to take care of the health aspects. So I think uh, let me, Mm. Stop over this. Right. Yeah. Rather, I have many more slides, but rather yeah. I. No, so stop, and then there are a few questions. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. By, by the participants. 
better you please uh, take those questions and see that yeah. Yeah. you see the right uh, answers that would be more helpful uh -huh. i can see fascinating oh, okay professor mahesh tandon Yeah, uh, Professor uh, Mahesh Tendon Saab, Namaste. Uh, yes, you said that though uh, not all connected directly with structural engineering, we must all know about disaster before we can take preemptive action for mitigation. Yes, about Professor Bilham. He spent decades uh, to study the Himalayan earthquake. Please throw light on uh, whether uh, his predictions are being taken seriously in India. <laughs> okay. Uh, his predictions are uh, seriously, I think I, during my uh, presentation, uh, although not directly mentioning those projections, rather as in structural engineer uh, or in the civil engineering profession, uh, we are uh, sensitized enough uh, in our profession, uh, but taking seriously those things, especially in the hilly area, again, there are a lot many examples are there. Uh, so how serious we are, even post-event early warning measures that which are taken, I have shown in that Lachi Dam in Himachal Pradesh, they are not serious enough. Uh, we are not serious enough in that. And now whom to blame or whom to uh, salute for at least putting uh, that kind of uh, play card with a strong English uh, note that please don't go into that. Uh, so there is a lot of gaps are there. And uh, so our effort would be to reach to that common people, like I have shown in the just few slides before. So in the hilly area, uh, the building is made with all extensions and all poor quality and everything. And then putting a triple kind of things to arrest uh, rainwater entering into the bottom part of the building. So it is one kind of awareness, but uh, we have to come forward to, to, to visit sometime some of these spots and then take some kind of, you know, uh, we can see that I'll be always available to, row, uh, to go to those kind of sites which are serious enough where our technology know-how, our codal provisions, our, our wise, uh, uh, say, our wisdom are not able to reach there. So uh, at least uh, we can uh, make it happen that go to the site, mostly in the hilly area, and and then just uh, be their guest and help them to take appropriate measures. I think I would say uh, whether government or municipality or DM or uh, district collector is going to circulate another notice, uh, which you can see even municipal authorities are also, before passing the plan, uh, they give two pages of do's and don'ts during construction. And interpretation of that becomes so difficult. Uh, but then again, it comes to us that we can make a representation uh, that, of course, I have a few slides there, how we are making uh, this aspect into the structural design engineering portal. I'd like to say briefly in that, uh, that uh, when digital construction has been emerging a lot and all the building design specially made, it is all being designed by structural engineer. So we have made a portal where structural engineers on record architect on record with their biodata. We have collated those biodata. In fact, we are going to uh, make uh, a pool of structural engineer, geotechnical engineer, and then uh, architect and planners. So we have made an online advertisement. There is a huge response has come along with their biodata. 
and their expertise. Mostly they are having 20 plus years of experience and many of them, they have been, uh, they have become super innovative, but very much active enough. Uh, so Professor Mahesh Standen, you are champion among them and our uh, Dhawan Sahib also. So we are coming forward to you to take your uh, wisdom that you have gathered uh, as a knowledge base uh, so that uh, we can design the building checked by a different level of you know experience of structural engineer and make that portal facilitate each one of the structural engineer uh, whatever design being made rerun it in the structural engineering design portal where all those softwares will be made available uh, and then check it that anything has gone wrong, whatever interpretation made uh, with the input parameters, whether they are correct or not. And then getting that kind of you know signature, that kind of vetting, two, three, four level of vetting, then during actual construction, we are making it that how construction quality, especially disaster resilient construction, because ultimately whatever code has been evolved since 1962 in earthquake engineering, along with in all civil engineering. So whatever clause or whatever, uh, you know, formula is being taken due to the digital construction. And we have programmed in such a way that when someone says that I have followed IS 1893 2002, or even 2016, uh, someone say like that, saying is not enough, which clause, which one is made useful. So we have made a helping file for the, for the structural designer who are on record in our team, then they will be able to check that what is actually written over there. So they can retrieve that information, uh, just like a Microsoft Office, if you want to make one kind of command or one equation, it is having a, a lots of helping tools so that it becomes a self-learning. So I think to to reach to a level where uh, level that where which is a standard design, and then site engineer, especially structural engineer, those who are passing out or those who are fresh enough, they are being uh, you know put into this system so that they can communicate, they can learn. So the literal learning take place from like, uh, from you, uh, that you are having 50 years of experience. So a structural engineer who are having say BTEC or even MTEC first semester, second semester, they are also put into this portal. They will be designing first, they will be learning along with the, uh, along with the group of structural engineer that uh, that who will be facilitated so there there will be a cross learning or lateral learning uh, in that case then we are making our building through this portal a mandatory uh, service engineer who will be put on site with some payment whatever payment is there so that each and every aspect of the constructions that are taking place on site they are being tested vetted on site and then through mobile uh, mobile phone, through mobile app, they will be able to check each and every dimensions along with the quality. Until and unless this, that quality is being okayed by uh, specific site engineer, specialist structural engineer on site, then construction will not proceed. Moreover, during construction of a building, there are many changes happen in the drawing. So maybe 10 story building in the second floor, some changes are happening. The, that change reads different version of the software. Uh, software means uh, the design software and everything. But this will be made automatically uh, updated so that third floor, fourth floor onward, the, the whatever modification has come, uh, it will be all auto updated there. And then another thing is whenever structural design is being made, the uh, looking at the client side as well as construction agency side, what is the BOQ of the material and what is the market price and cost and where the suppliers uh, of the material available? What is the quality standards? And then rating them, rating them that which quality is better enough. It is something like 
Uber or Ola kind of system that has revolutionized for the last so many years in the in the taxi or in the communication or in the local and area map sharing and other things. So we, we uh, it is it was in the uh, last part of the thing, but we'll be very much uh, coming up with this area, the structural design engineering portal. Starting with structure only, we have not entered into yet foundation part or if foundation part is taken only what is the bearing capacity. But I myself uh, uh, are going to deal with that foundation making 3D soil profile of that, collecting data, authenticating soil investigation data, and then making geotechnical engineer, a pool of geotechnical engineer uh, will be made responsible to check those soil profile, 3D profile, where uh, soil data is not there, then it must be there. Where soil data is there, then no need of repeating there. So such kind of you know data pool will be made, and then soil structure, then at the same time architect who gets the project. So uh, they all are made part and parcel of uh, this. And when BOQ is be being made, then what is the amount of expenditure phase wise, and then uh, then whether storage of the materials. Are, so once it is made into digital many such management can be made efficiently. Even many of the cases in construction site, storage is a prime requirement. Here, storage may be minimal required. So uh, some of these things are coming up with digital constructions, which we have made. Very soon, it is going to come into the market. In fact, it has started already, test running is going on. So, uh, sorry, I have taken to, and then there is, uh, are sensors provided in major infrastructure such as bridge, just to monitor stress signals. Anything bring, anything bring done, being done for aging infrastructure. So there are number of cases, but I do not have the exact data records, but we know that uh, some of the specific cases and projects uh, some companies are also there. You may check also in the uh, in the professional uh, LinkedIn uh, that some of the infrastructure, some of the bridges, they are being monitored through sensors and certificates are being given. Even some of the buildings are also checked by some of the professional agencies and then they get structural safety certificate also. But at the same time, we have to ask Again, question uh, ourselves. I have many such structure uh, in my uh, in my uh, collections that which may defy the decision given by the structural engineer on the safety certificate because construction history <coughs> construction history is more or less not available. Detailed structural uh, plan not available. Although there are certain tools available to recreate the structural dra drawing like with LiDAR mapping, 3D LiDAR mapping, uh, we can recreate a structural drawing, which otherwise normal uh, survey, normal checking of the uh, normal way, it cannot be possible. So there are 3D photogrammetric uh, survey or LiDAR mapping uh, gives us uh, recreate or rebuild the drawing. Uh, and then scanners and other things are there, which we can check that what is the, uh, what is the uh, status of the reinforcement, whether it is in good conditions or not. Or also we can check that by those scanner, uh, whether reinforcement are appropriate enough or not. Accordingly, they can help in uh, evaluating the sufficiency or with the code upgradation that going to take place, uh, going uh, taking place every time, every decade or every version that it comes up. Uh, then there is a huge responsibility uh, for us uh, to look into the structural sufficiency of the buildings which uh, made before 1984 or 1980. And there should be a certain uh, guideline has to come to demolish or revolution or some of the building, majority of the building is not possible to evaluate. Also, you can see that structure even in Delhi or even many of the tier two, tier three city area, it is just not possible to estimate that whether their structure is sufficient or not, because it is beyond, it is so much complex. It is so many structural deficiency or 
sufficiency or over sufficiency are there or in many places geometric is not good enough geometry is not as per the code so giving a structural uh, safety certificate or giving a certificate or uh, giving a go ahead uh, for a breach or measure su such infrastructure is a really really challenging job and we know that in CBRI, CRRI and many of the IITs or many of the private organizations and public organizations, uh, they have taken a uh, lot of step in this direction, uh, doing a live testing of some bridges. So it has to be taken up in more, uh, you know, effective way. So, do you think uh, that the methods for health rating system used by US or Japan can be directly implemented in the Indian context? I think uh, you have rightly asked the, you have put the arrow in the right eye, uh, whether it can be done or not. Um, uh, just, uh, we often say that, anyone say that when an earthquake of seven, is not uh, seven when it is happening in Japan is not of that much concern or 7.5, whereas an earthquake of six is a big concern for us. So uh, when this is considered as realistic way of judgment, then you know that uh, who is the person or who is the group of persons or civil engineers or structural engineer is going to uh, take care of all the structures that we have made over here and just only by seeing it, checking it, uh, they can give a sufficiency certificate. I think it is, it is beyond our capacity to judge in this manner because when we see that uh, our buildings are structurally uh, deficient, not that uh, it is deficient in terms of amount of reinforcement as per calculation, by uh, what formula that available. But at the same time, during construction itself, there are so many deficiencies are there. Of course, if I show those deficiencies, there are, uh, I, I don't think there is any perfect structure until and unless it is made now these days, steel construction or steel, uh, uh, say steel reinforced or steel and covered with high graded concrete, which is the main, especially in the earthquake prone area. So steel reinforced or steel reinfo construction uh, is being promoted uh, because they are going to take in a big way uh, uh, because we are able to define uh, at least uh, that if uh, wind is there or earthquake is there, at least uh, through their connections, whatever calculations that we have made by new and shear force or torsion, uh, steel, constructions can at least give us that sufficiency or confidence uh, that they are going to uh, behave the way that uh, it is being designed. But as far as concrete and other things, where in a same beam, same floor, different types of quality of the concretes are there. And quality vary from M10 to M25, M30, until and unless some special structures are there where minimum M50, M60, M70, even M100 uh, concrete are also there. So barring few uh, majority of the cases, we are not confident enough how to judge the sufficiency of the structure. Any more questions? I think that's, uh, let me say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, friends, uh, you are so lucky to have a wonderful uh, uh, professor who has vast experience in this uh, thing. And then the talk that he has given highlighted the borders of uh, such uh, way as to be taken for safety. See the, the structural design portal, he said, and for that, we have to have the application of uh, the devices that he has said, uh, like early warning devices, IoT devices, multiple devices, 
and the use of sensor devices, and all these things which we apply for the disaster management through mobile lab, and the thing that he has highlighted that we need to have the baseline signature, and then the portal of all the architect, planners, structure designers, geotechnical, and other experts joined together to make the structure more safe uh, and durable. I think that is the message he has conveyed to all the young structural engineers. So the technology is moving. Uh, we have to acquire that knowledge and experience and use that and apply that to make our sector safe. This is what I would like to highlight. Now, in the end, the next lecture by our uh, president, Dr. Pradeep, would be there on 22nd of February. Uh, again, an important topic. So uh, this is what I would like to say. Uh, thank you all. And wish you all a happy new year. And then acquire knowledge and dissipate that amongst the brothers. And uh, this is what uh, I would conclude. Uh, and uh, thanks again to our Professor Ghosh for spending okay. his valuable time and sharing his knowledge and experience to the young sexual engineers. Thank you. Thank you. Nice.